Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Welcome to IM131, where we're going to be checking out the A-shape major bar chord. Now, a lot of people find this chord pretty tough, and it does require quite a lot of finger strength, so I'm hoping that you've done plenty of practice with your E-shape bar chord, and you've strengthened up that muscle there in between your first finger and your thumb. You're going to need it. Um, it's not a particularly difficult chord when you get it, but getting it can be a bit of a problem. So what I'm going to do in this lesson is go through as many tips and tricks as I can possibly think of to help you get that chord kind of solid. Mostly it's going to take practice like everything else. Uh, let's get to a close-up and we'll check out how to play it. Okay, let's start by looking how an A-shaped bar chord is formed. Now many of you will know this open A chord, either like this with the one, two, three fingers all in a line, which is kind of the traditional approach, I teach A chord with the first and second fingers swapped over. Now, as you know with a bar chord, we need to get rid of our first finger. So what we're going to be doing is using our second finger on the fourth string, on the second fret, third finger directly underneath on the third string, and little finger on the second string, also in the second fret. So they're all crammed up together. Now, as you probably know from E to F, we're going to be moving A to B flat bar chord. So this chord shape would move up one fret, and then our first finger needs to replace the nut, so the first finger is going to go down and cover the notes on the first fret there. Now, it's actually only covering two notes, and this is the first really important thing. Hopefully many of you have learned also your fifth string root power chords, in which you will have learned that the tip of the first finger just here has to touch the thicker string to mute that, because we don't want that thick string sounding, the sixth string, the low E string. That should be muted, so make sure the tip of your first finger is kind of pressing up a little bit to mute that thicker string. Now, in this way of playing it, the edge of the first finger is also playing the first fret on the thinner string. In order to get that chord sounding good like that, the little finger needs to be quite round in order, order for it to kind of reach over the top. Now, this is okay, but it's a really difficult chord grip to jump to. Really difficult. Uh, for most people, that you know, jumping from an, e, uh, an F chord, say, to that, and getting those fingers all in a row is pretty difficult. So most people play the bar, A-shaped bar chord like this, the A-shaped major bar chord, using a bar with the third finger there to cover the three strings. Now note that I'm tucking this second finger off and away and the little finger. I'm kind of tucking them out of the way to get you a good clear look at the chord. But when you're playing it regularly, those fingers would still be out kind of hanging around somewhere. So um, don't copy that if you, if you notice that I'm doing it. So now in order to get this shape, it's kind of difficult here at the first fret. So what I'm going to recommend is that we move all of the way up to the fifth fret. Here we are with my first finger now in the fifth fret of the fifth string which is the note D, so we're going to be playing a D major bar chord. Now, first finger, of course, is the tip of it is touching the thicker string, the sixth string, to keep that one quiet. We're playing that note, the D note, and then the third finger is going to try and lay down as a little bar. So you're kind of doing a bar chord now, but we're doing the bar with the third finger. Now, the third finger is touching the note that, or pressing down on the strings four, three, and two. Be very careful the tip of the third finger isn't touching the fifth string or it'll mute it, and we definitely want that root note ringing out nice and clear. So that finger's laying down and it's kind of lifting up a little bit at the end. So the thinner string is actually muted. And because the thinner string is muted, we don't even need a proper bar. The, the, actually, the only note that we're playing here is the fifth string, fifth fret. And then the tip of the finger is muting that and muting all of the rest of the strings. Then the bar is going down, playing those three, and muting the thinner string. Now, yeah, we're getting one less note than we might if we'd played D this way, which is already getting hard to fit those three fingers in that fret. That's kind of difficult to get them all crammed up in there. Yeah, we're missing this thinner string note, but to be honest, you don't miss it. This chord, generally, it sounds better. Now, if you've got exactly the right length finger joint here between the tip of the third finger and that first knuckle, you can kind of lift the, the finger up at where the joint is to get that note if you want to use the bar, the full bar, and then you can hear I can get those three notes. It's a little bit sketchy and it, you know, I don't, I can kind of do it most of the time, but it's 
quite it's kind of difficult and I have to really think about it and most of the time if I'm playing for real I'm thinking about the music more than exactly getting my fingers in the right place so I would strongly strongly recommend muted play the note of the fifth fret bar the three strings with the third finger and the thinner string is muted that's that's the way that the majority of people play an A-shaped major chord and it is the way that I think that you should play it too now what's really important here is getting the angle here of this joint. So I'm going to change the camera position now so you can see exactly what I mean. Here we are looking at a close-up side angle view of an A-shaped major bar chord. So the things that I want you to observe are the first finger touching the thicker string. Really important, you can see clearly now the first finger touching that string there. Also now you can see the third finger, and this is the, probably the most important bit, is how far out this knuckle is. So this part's on the strings, quite clear, but it's zooming right out as far as I can get it away and pressing back down. It means that we get a really solid pressure with this part, of this kind of first joint of the third finger. I'm kind of thinking about the pressure going down on the G string in the middle of that bar, kind of in the middle of my fingernail. That's the part I'm thinking about pressing down. This part is, is pushing right far forward. Now, I've, I've put a picture on the website which also demonstrates kind of where the pressures are, but you can see that's how your hand should be sitting. It takes practice. This, this joint won't feel like doing that. You, you'll probably find that your fingers are quite flat. A lot of people try and do this with their hand all straight, which is really bad habit because it puts your arm in a horrible position, which I'm going to show you in a second. But this is it's quite important. The more you get this knuckle forward, the better your wrist position is, the better and clearer the notes will be, and the quicker it is to change. You can see if I'm changing from an E shape to an A shape this way, that's, it's a really easy movement compared to having to go like this, and then I, I can't even do it without having to reposition my bar chord, which is a, a real pain. This way it kind of just jumps forward. It's, it's loads, loads better to do this way. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, I get a lot of questions from people as well about how the wrist should be positioned and where the thumb should be positioned for bar chords. So I thought I'd give a little opportunity now to uh, explain a bit about that. So if your first finger, if you're sorry, if your third finger is really straight, the way I said that it'll probably be when you start, but you, you, it shouldn't be. If you do that, it makes your wrist at a really full-on horrible angle, and it kind of hurts. I don't, that's uncomfortable already for me. But as soon as I and point out that, that knuckle of the third finger it enables me to play the chord with an almost straight wrist. Now it's not straight straight, okay, it's not that. That would be kind of perfectly nice and straight but it's, and it's impossible to do that. So having a bit of an angle is fine but it's still not locked like that. That's, that's bad. That's really bad. So try and keep it as flat as you can. You will people with bigger hands will find it easier than people with smaller hands to, to have less angle but try and be aware of that all the time. Don't let your kind of wrist lock like that. If you look at it and see it looks like a right angle you're doing something wrong. So try and keep it as flat as you can, say so, you know 30 degrees or something like that should be about fine. Now when it comes to thumb position, I don't really talk about thumb position a lot with the bar chords. The reason is that everyone seems to place it slightly differently. Now it's kind of behind my fingers, behind where my first finger is I guess, but it could be back here a bit, could be forward. Some, some people prefer the thumb pointing right up, some people have it angled at the back. To be honest, mine's about halfway, so I guess it's about a 45 degree angle there if I'm just trying to do it without, you know, thinking about it too much. But different people, of course, have different length thumbs as well. It's a very kind of one of the things about our species. We're all very different like that with the shapes of our hands. So, you know, I, I do meet guys that play with their thumb right the way down the neck like that, but it's comfortable for them. So what you have to find is how it's comfortable for yourself. Don't, don't be too obsessed with, oh, I've got to do it this way, and oh, Justin has his at a 45, mine better be too. It, it's for you to kind of feel it out. Generally, it, you've got to remember, it's counteracting the force of the fingers of the bar. So it's got to be behind them. If it's too far back like that, it's just going to be awkward. If, if your bar's around the fifth fret, that then you, your thumb's probably going to want to be somewhere roughly behind your first finger. But... Don't stress yourselves out about it, it's not that important. 
Of course, other essential things that you need to know, you need to know the root notes. So I'm hoping that most of you have learned the root notes on the fifth string from when you learned power chords in the beginners course. If you haven't, you really need to go back and check that out right away because that's kind of an essential beginner skill to know the notes on the sixth and fifth strings. Uh, in fact, you really as an intermediate player, I'd expect you to know the notes on all of the, all six strings on all the frets or be learning it. So hopefully you've got those notes on the fifth string and you can therefore figure out where a D chord is or an E chord or a C chord, whatever. Um, now, if you're playing it too far toward the nut, so like a B flat or a B chord, they're the hardest places to press down a bar. So if you're really struggling like that, try it right up the neck. I was demonstrating on the fifth fret, but you might even want to move up to the seventh fret. That will be okay, or eighth fret, whatever feels kind of the most comfortable for you. The further up the neck it is, usually it's the easier to press the strings down. Um, if you've got a really high action on your guitar, um, a lot of people struggle with, with bar chords, especially if they play an acoustic guitar, it's not a particularly expensive one, the action is very high. And, and by action, I mean that the strings are very far away from the fingerboard. Um, and a, a good trick like that, just as a kind of a stopgap while you're trying to learn the shape, if you, just, if you put a capo on, say, the third fret, and practice playing your bar chord at the fifth fret, the capo just keeps the strings kind of closer to the fingerboard. So that can be a good cheat. And I know uh, quite a few people in the 50s and 60s when the, you know, a lot of guitars weren't set up nice used to use a capo all the time just to bring the action down, not really for the use of, the, of changing the pitch. So you might find that'll help a little bit. Um, if you get really bummed out with it and you just can't be playing this, this you know, with the third finger and you're feeling that you can't get that, uh, the, the knuckle pointing out the way you need to, then it's kind of okay to use fingers two, three, and four, in, you know, the, the, the way I initially showed you when I formed the chord. It's, it's just harder to change to and from the chord. That's the reason it's not good. It's got advantages too, because you can play the, the thinnest E string a lot easier. But for fast chord changes, it's really not the one. So I, I would strongly, strongly recommend persevering with this third finger technique. It is gonna take some practice. Try not to get disheartened. Um, you know, it, everyone, everyone, in fact, I've never ever had a student ever who's just gone, oh yeah, I can do that chord real easy. Everyone's taken at least a few weeks to kind of get their fingers so that it's sitting right, you know, because it, it's a bit fiddly. You've got to find the chord shape and kind of let your fingers move around a little bit and find their, find their own way of playing this chord, you know, within the guidelines I've given you of how you should be doing it, you know, that's, um, that's what I think that you should be doing. Um, I think we're just about there. So to give this lots of practice in your routine. Just um, well, a couple of things to remember. You're going to be, of course, doing strum, pick out the notes, strum, and making sure that you've got every note. If you, what you'll often find is something like this. The B string won't be ringing out. So that means that you're kind of pointing the knuckle a bit too far and you need to bring it back down. There we go. So that's the first thing to think about if the, if the B string's not ringing out. Try and make sure that the thinnest string is muted and the thickest string. So check that from time to time to make sure that they're not out as well because what you don't want is to do loads of work on your chord shape. You've got that sounding nice but then you've, you know, the other strings are ringing out when they shouldn't be. That, that would be a bit of a pain. Other than that, it's just going to be practice. Strum, pick out strum, keep at it, stick with it. Even if it gets real tough, dig deep, keep going and you will crack it. I promise. So uh, have fun with that. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to be changing from E-shape to this new friend of ours. See you soon. Bye-bye.